let's build the open infrastructure economy. That was the message on the main keynote to OpenStack community at the summit in Vancouver this week. Mark, let's build the open infrastructure economy. What do we mean by open infrastructure? Because it's undoubtedly been the, the theme of the week here. Yes, I mean, I, th I think really what, what we're talking about is um, just a whole plethora of new ways in which people can build and operate infrastructure using open source tools. Mm. Um, and you know, one of the things I talked about on Monday is that it's not just the open source, that's a huge part of it, that's an enabler, but there's other things that need to be done in order for it to work. But, but ultimately it's, it's about sort of um, giving people more choices of how they uh, build and operate their infrastructure mm -hmm. in ways that kind of empower the operator and sort of uh, not necessarily you know, um, lock them in to different, different tools providers or different um, public cloud providers. And in, especially in telecom, I mean, a public cloud, the traditional public cloud providers would, would just aren't applicable for what they want to do to modernize their network. So they need to build and operate their own infrastructure and having open uh, alternatives is like extremely compelling for the telecom world. Now you were also saying in the, in the keynote that you want to bust the myth that cloud is consolidating, uh -huh. rather cloud is actually diversifying. Yeah, it's really interesting. I think, you know, 10 years ago or so, and cloud sort of getting started, um, getting traction, the basic concept that everybody kind of wrapped their head around was, okay, we get it, it's going to be the lowest common denominator, the slowest chips that you can buy because they're really cheap, the, the, the old, you know, hard drives, and you just, it's horizontal, horizontal, it's just one big, massive, you know, you string together a whole bunch of these cheap um, white box computers, it's commodity hardware, and you just scale out horizontally, and that's cloud. And everyone sort of said, okay, I can see how that's going to be very disruptive. You know, this is going to change the industry. So that all happened, but then what, what happened at, at now we're at this point where people are so reliant on cloud, basically automated infrastructure, and the, the workloads are so demanding that it actually makes sense to go the other way, which is more specialized chips, more specialized uh, storage, more you know, high performance, um, networking uh, options and you know that's kind of diversifying on the hardware side and then on the software side some of the the things you can do with infrastructure like AI machine learning um, it turns out that those problems are so hard to solve that people actually need open source to solve them and so that we have this diversification of different tools that people are bringing together so the actual reality has turned you know it's got everything in, in tech it sort of get the pendulum swings both ways but right now we're looking at at things actually diversifying GPUs um, so it's, it's, it's always a fun thing to keep you on your toes in, the, in this industry. Have you been somewhat surprised by how much telcos have embraced OpenStack? You know, I would say that um, if you go back to the beginning of OpenStack, when we started the project, and if you had told me, okay, you know, millions of people's phone calls on AT&T mm -hmm. will be routed through a network running on OpenStack, mm -hmm. I would be completely floored. So in that sense, you know, yeah. completely surprised. Um, but now that, you know, uh, it's a little easier in retrospect to see why. That sort of seems obvious now, but at the time, yeah, we, we were very surprised. But you know, basically, it's fundamentally um, we we think about these different verticals and, and different use cases. But really, it's it's processing, storing, and moving data. That's what all this is about. And if you think about how networks are transforming by through software to go from you know to 4G and now 5G, mm -hmm. it's processing, storing, and moving data. So in retrospect, it's sort of like okay, I can see totally why. OpenStack is a yeah. fit there, but it definitely surprised us when it started out. Now, when the telcos transform the networks and they're moving their, their, their bits around, we come to this fascinating place called the edge, yes. wherever, wherever that is exactly. <laughs> um, how will OpenStack play in, in edge environments? It's a great question. Um, that's another one that I would say um, is a more recent surprise. You know, mm -hmm. probably it's been five years since we kind of were surprised by telecom, but now in the last year, um, Edge has, has really just come on um, like a freight train. I mean, we saw a year ago, um, Beth Cohen from Verizon got up and, and said, not just like, hey, OpenStack can work at the Edge, but here's a box, here's OpenStack in a box, we're running it. So, you know, honestly, you know, it's a, the nice thing about open source is sometimes um, you not only find out about an idea, but you find out it's already been implemented mm -hmm. for the first time because you, you just don't know what people are doing with this, because they can do whatever they want with it. And then you find these amazing innovations. And, and a lot, that opened a lot of people's eyes a year ago. So for the past year, we put together an edge working group, uh, representatives from all the major telcos, a lot of different uh, vendors, and just uh, open source you know, enthusiasts have gotten involved. And so um, yeah, OpenStack is definitely um, has a role at the edge. And, um, and what the, the, whatever the missing pieces are, that's kind of been the first 
Uh, the first wave is like, let's define what we mean by edge. Let's see where the existing tools, OpenStack and other, fit or don't fit. Where are the gaps? And then if need be, let's create some new technology to fill in the gaps. So that's kind of the process we've been going through. It's not at the end yet, but we're definitely seeing um, edge as a huge trend for open infrastructure and OpenStack gets to come along for that ride as well. Now you're wearing some uh, vintage <laughs> swag here. You can't help but notice. Yes. Uh, vintage is a, is, is a relative term because you know, <laughs> OpenStack has, has only been in existence for a relatively short space of time. Yes, yes. But what next? You know, where, where, is, where is this movement going? Because it's an it's a, it's incredibly strong community mm -hmm. you, you've got here. Where does a foundation kind of help direct and, and, yeah. and move the industry? It's a great question. Well, this, this particular shirt was when we, we first uh, said the, the slogan that I fight for the users. Mm -hmm and just kind of wanted, uh, that was, I don't know, five, six years ago, something like that, and we said, you know, if you look at um, o a, o a platform ecosystem, you have three forces you need to have strong and in alignment to, to work. You need to have um, users, you need to have an ecosystem of companies around it making money, making products, um, and developers. And a lot of platforms get like two out of three right, and that's what, why they fall down. So we, we identified early on, like, we've got to have users actively involved um, so I, I got off on a tangent about the t-shirt, but you're asking <laughs> where we're going from here. I mean, I think that um, in terms of the conference and the community, it's really about solving problems. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's one of the things we've tried to, to do a little differently. Um, this summit is, instead of, uh, you know, the typical conference, tech conference, you get up and people say, look at what I already built, look at how great it is, buy it right now. And it's all about the hype of what's built. And you know, our community is about solving problems, which is like you know, an action <laughs> and, and not like an end. And so we're trying to say, like, what are the areas where open infrastructure, um, there's a huge opportunity, you know, trillion dollar markets that we can be in, whether it's edge and, and you know, of course data centers and other places. So we're saying, okay, if that's, if that's the end goal, let's think about what the requirements are and let's use this conference to bring together smart people from all over the world you know, we have people from over 50 countries here, hundreds of companies, and that's how you solve problems is, you know, the smartest people are never going to be in one company. It just doesn't work that way. I think that a yeah. famous quote from, from the guy at Sun that, you know, there are always going to be more smart people outside of your company than inside. It's nothing that you can do about that, but open source is what you can do about it. So I think it's about solving problems. I do think edge is, is a huge thing. And I, I would also say, if you want to look sort of beyond that, AI um, is obviously a hot trend. and. But what's interesting to me is it's not really distinct. You know, AI is going to be very relevant at the edge. Some people think AI must mean like data center, huge, you know, yeah. massive processing. But actually, like a big part of why edge is important is that the data coming in is, is there's too much of it to transport all the way up to a big data center. You need to uh, be smart about it, store it, process it, make decisions on it at the edge. So if you use like a CERN, for example, Large Hadron Collider, they talked about how they get a petabyte a second um, of data off of the, the collider, they have to throw away like 95% of that and just pick the, the most valuable pieces because it's not physically possible to store it all. So deciding what to throw away, what to keep, that's where things like machine learning, AI, those insights come in. So I think AI is going to be relevant uh, at the edge in the data center. And that's kind of a cool new trend we'll probably be seeing the next year or so. Mark, great talking to you. Thanks for joining us on Telecom TV. Thank you. Happy to be here.